So I've just returned to Brawl Stars and it's been a year since I've been on this game and a lot has changed, apart from Edgar. See, he's still kicking about, aren't you, mate? Whatever. However, for my debut, I hit the highest trophy count for any brawler, which is Shelly at 800 trophies. <laughs> So I decided I would do a video explaining this journey and update my progress when I hit trophy milestones and so on. We can kind of figure out those milestones later on, but likely it will probably be a thousand trophies will be the next video I'll do on Shelly specifically. So I suppose you could probably call this series, but if you're a dad in your 30s and still think you're pro, then this content is probably going to be for you, albeit amateurly produced, amateurly, albeit produced like an amateur <laughs> you can laugh at my 800 trophy milestone but if you're here you're either here to laugh or to see how i did it so hopefully it's the latter but you know you gotta take the good with the bad all right let's break this down then so it's showdown it's solo and we don't go out of our way to team we just tactically ignore people or avoid them for more favorable outcomes and i know this sounds really really woolly you're gonna be like that still sounds like teaming bro but actions do speak louder than words, or emotes, or sprays in Brawl Stars, right? And essentially, we're not just going to constantly spin and pray that someone's going to be our friend, basically. We're just going to... If somebody is desperate to obviously team with us, if we're like Shelly, then we're going to abuse them if they're a melee character, so that we can build up our super. But we might not go out of our way to kill them if somebody else is more of a threat. So that's essentially what I mean. But we're not going to like have a hug and cuddle in the middle of the showdown map but if they get really close to me and have the opportunity to kill them i'm gonna kill them and that's as simple as that there are some games on this where you literally cannot like avoid it like i've been in lobbies where like literally every single player is teaming and before you know it there's two teams of two there's three teams of two now there's two teams of three now there's like two teams of four in like some really rare instances although it seems feels like it happens more than more often than not and it, it's just really 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 frustrating so in those instances you kind of you have to adapt a little bit but obviously where you can we're going to try and avoid it i think like in order i'm going to cover the build the best showdown map to reach 800 trophies the best and worst matchups how difficult was it to reach this milestone uh, accompanied by a tier list because everyone loves a tier list i love a tier list and then my final thoughts before we start let's look at the absolute state of the team in that i just mentioned a minute ago As for the build then so um with shelly we don't unfortunately we do not have the hypercharge so 5,000 coins is super expensive we have managed to get to this milestone without that i do think as we start to try and climb even further with shelly that the hypercharge is going to be quite important but obviously there are brawlers that are in the game that don't have hypercharges so it's not a completely unfair playing field but you definitely do notice the difference when you do have a hypercharge. You're more respected in a showdown map, especially when you have your super. So the fact that we don't have that, it is giving us a bit of a disadvantage at the moment. But as for the build, so for the gadgets, we can either have fast forward or clay pigeons. Like 99.9% .9 of the time, I'm taking clay pigeons. I used to use fast forward quite a bit, which allows you to dash. But to be honest, considering you can still be stunned, it's not very reliable. It's not the quickest dash in the world, and it does have some frame recovery and start up. It just really doesn't cover that much distance. I don't like it. I don't use it. It's not for me. I use clay pigeons. You for five seconds when you activate it, it does. Um, what it does is it basically makes the spread decrease by 67%. So you're basically almost like a sniper, and it also increases the range, which is great. Uh, and there are like lots of different maps where you'll kind of be chasing somebody. And they've got nowhere to go but kind of run in a straight line and so you can almost like tap clay pigeons to the point where you're not even aiming you can just tap it and it will it'll guaranteed hit and sometimes as well 
when you're having like a close encounter with somebody um, and you definitely want all of your bullet bullets to hit bullets you always want your bullets to hit then clay pigeons can be fantastic for that so huge 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 fan of that um as for the star powers then so you've got shell shock or you've got a band-aid now shell shock i think in like more team-based games can be really good where it basically slows people down for two seconds after you've supered them i don't see the slowdown being that beneficial and it definitely isn't the same as band-aid so band-aid if you don't know what it does is you have to wait 15 seconds so for the first 15 seconds in a match you are a little bit vulnerable because until you get band-aid activated um if you fall below 40 percent health then you will instantly heal 2200 health now i've been playing shelly at maximum level and when you're at max level i believe that you are at 7400 health so once band-aid is activated 2220 well now you've got like 9620 health which is just absolutely insane obviously if you add on um the gear as well so that you can have an extra armor i think it's around 900 um you add that on there too you've nearly basically got like 9000 health uh, over 9 uh, over 10000 health sorry which is just absolutely crazy uh, like instances where you're clash with somebody you're going to you're going to kill them like and you're going to get away with it um sometimes a ball can kill you um, but really you're splitting hairs at that point and it's probably just more dependent on who's got more power cubes than the other person so um that's kind of the build um and where i would go with it and then as i say hypercharge when i get that that will be really really useful um and hopefully we will get that soon all right so in terms of what is the best map or the maps that i've had the most success with there is a website on brawlify.com i'll leave a link um in the description below which basically gives you a bit of an outline of all the different maps that you can have so you'll see some of those on screen so the ones that i have had the most success with and returning to the game i have noticed that they have they did change quite a few of the maps so they they have they have changed a little bit so um cavern churn with all of the fields in the middle that is a really really good map for shelly because you can hide um in, in fields there and the only real counter that you have is if you run against a ball and you haven't got band-aid yet and they've got a lot of power cubes you're probably going to lose or if you've got a bow that can see you in the grass that can be quite tough and then also dynamite as well if he's obviously able to catch you out and you're not in the grass where you're hiding you can be a little bit uh susceptible to being being caught out there but other than that, Cavern Churn is probably one of the best maps for Shelly, in my humble opinion. Then you've got um, Stormy Plains as well. So Stormy Plains is not too bad because there's quite a lot of different areas within the map that you can kind of hide around. And there's lots of different squares there are. There is a little bit of an open area around the outside. But typically, as a Shelly, you'll try and get inside the map as quickly as possible. So you only really have to be careful of throwers. Skull Creek's not too bad either. It is a little bit more open in the middle, but it can definitely work. Uh, and then I would probably say after that, that the last map that's not too bad, you can have a bit of success with Double Trouble, but it's very, very open unless you're in the middle and you can be easily picked. So I tend to not usually do Double Trouble too much with Shelly and I definitely didn't really do um, Safety Center that much either. I mean, it can work when you get close to the middle, but what I find is on this map, you have a lot of surges as well, which is extremely frustrating. So not big, not a big fan of that. And then you've, I think the only other ones you've got after that is Forsaken Falls and then Doom Drift, which obviously way too open, wouldn't really use those. And again, you've got that grass in the middle for Forsaken Falls, but you're more than likely just going to get picked off. Um, but you can do it. You can, it can work. Um, Forsaken Falls can work, but it's just not, for me, it's not as favorable as the other. So um, that's kind of, kind of my opinion there on the maps. And again, do encourage you guys to let me know if you've had success on other maps or feel free to share links on different areas where you think that there is success i'm still kind of learning um i really wanted to do content on brawl stars because i found that a lot of the content that's out there is very much kind of uh, subtitled which you know no digs towards subtitled content you know some people like that i personally like to have a video on in the background maybe that's you know i can take information in and that's kind of what i'm trying to put out there for other people that like me that like to have somebody like talking and explaining and going through things and giving it a little bit more detail and not loads of jump cuts and snazzy music and stuff like that you know a little bit more 
down to earth um, in terms of just a little bit more cozy, a bit warm. You know, grab yourself a cup of tea and let's have a chat through things. Um, and then hopefully, you know, there's some guys out there that actually like that type of, type of content. So, yeah. Um, so best and worst matchups then. So I'm going to bring up, um, I'm going to do it in like a tier list form. Uh, and this is going to basically be what I believe is... Um, kind of like the best and worst matchups for Shelly specifically um, in terms of where I think she uh, sort of stands so essentially I've tried to do I've tried to break this down into different categories and again do feel free to put your comments down because I kind of want to make this a running theme as I go through all of the different brawlers and I get them to different trophy milestones so from the top we've got win hands down win most of the time skill matchup only in ideal situations and then just actively avoid trying to have a one-on-one -on -one. now this tier list is very much on a one-to-one -one scenario you're at full health they're at full health you have the best build or the build that we've gone through today they have the most ideal build for them again could be could be subjective but again overall and you're both at the same level ideal max level um and you know without kind of looking without taking the maps into consideration because yes maps can obviously have an impact determined on where you can kind of get um whether you can have these ballers and i and this is a very very subjective opinion as well so you know i absolutely appreciate that there are going to be some differences that you know we may have and versus myself so i'm going to literally just rattle off some key ones from the bottom and kind of just justify my reasoning for those uh, and then kind of as we work our way through just give a little bit of explanation why i think some of these ones are maybe a bit more skill matched up or you know only in ideal situations and stuff like that so the actively avoid ones then so you know bonnie got got good range she can keep you arranged you're out in the open she's probably going to hit you a few times once she gets a super she's going to jump on you um and at that point depending on how weak you are you could beat her or you might not but in most scenarios you're probably going to have a pretty tough time especially if she hits you a bonnie's not going to jump on you um, unless she's got you down a few times so you know if you are in the open and you do get caught that can be difficult for example for Bo, he can see you in the grass he's got long range he actually does pretty good damage at the moment unless you can get really close to him a really good bow is not going to let you get close to him and if they are then they're probably sitting on bombs and if they're good with their gadget um where they can kind of do the two second activation and then it blows you out all that sort of good stuff so um you know sometimes they have stun as well they trick you you think that they can they can see you but they actually can't and they've got the stun bombs anyway lots of different variables don't like bow in a matchup at all again you'll see a bit of a, fami a familiar theme on some of these long range ones so colt again if they're good skilled colt and they can keep hitting you you're not really gonna have very good success at them and and to be fair let's just clarify that yes if you if somebody one of most of these if they come into a bush and they don't know you're there yes you are probably gonna delete them like you will absolutely delete them um if you've got band-aid you've got your um you know you've got your armor up you've got everything up you, you you know your gear armor and all that sort of stuff yeah you're gonna kill them like we know that but what we're this is more about whether they can see you as much as you can see them um and maybe you're both out in the opening you're just having that one-to-one -one. so it's gonna be very very difficult for the ones that i've put in these avoid and again you know dynamite can throw stuff over if he hits you with a stun you're probably gonna die um piper again if she can keep you at range she's got good gadgets to also slow you down and keep you away that's going to be difficult rico hits you a few times bouncing off of walls does his ult you can see the theme that we're going for here these are long range champions uh sorry champion <laughs> it's not league mate these are long ranged brawlers that can keep you at bay and still do good damage um now cordelius is a bit of a weird one because obviously if he ults you and you keep away from him um most cordelius is at the gadget that kind of just stops you from using your super and, and then in that scenario if he keeps hitting you, you you're probably going to die um, and a good cordelius will hit you a few times and as soon as they hit you once they'll they'll make it so that you can't use your super or your gadget then they'll ult you come up to you shoot you, you're dead so you really have to get them like you know either chip them down or you know get them unexpectedly with the super before they gadget you otherwise you know I actively avoid them. The only in ideal situations then, so these are the ones where, okay, we could talk a little bit more about map dependent or where it's like more in your favor a little bit. So, you know, for example, 
if you've got like 8 bit and he's not in a straight line where he can't hit you you're going to be able to get him same with amber you know she has to have keep you at a medium range has to have full ammo it's not a, just a straight up i would avoid same with b you know you can obviously you know you, you could say you could avoid some of the one you could avoid some of the bullets and stuff in the avoid i just think that it's a bit easier to avoid some of these and again this is just my personal experience um and again you know just some other call outs there for example like you know it if you've got somebody i mean most some and again some of these brawlers you just don't see really that much in solo showdown so you know it, it's not that much you know you're not gonna i have to sort of gauge roughly what they do and then put them in the only ideal situations if i think so yeah i think some of these ones you know they're not as bad as the avoid but i would still i would still give them a bit of a wide berth unless it favors me um, in an ideal situation so where we're talking about yeah if they are a bit weaker or they've been hit or you know you've got a clear shot on them then yeah you know you could you could take these brawlers out skill matchups then so uh, these are the ones where i just think it's uh a little bit you know for example like barley's really really weak obviously he's a thrower like some of the other characters that are in the only ideal situations and avoid categories but he's really really weak so if you hit him with like clay pigeons and that you're probably going to kill him pretty quick if he's not hiding behind walls and doing a really good job whereas i think with some of the other ballers that we just mentioned if they are throwing out um you know if you hit them a few times they're not going to die as quickly so that is the reason why you know barley and like nom for example they're they're in there um or is it Gom? Gom? Nom? Someone let me know. I'm really bad at pronouncing names. You'll get used to this. So, but then, for example, like, Ball. Ball, obviously, if you haven't got your Band-Aid up and that sort of stuff, and if he's got maybe a Power Cube or two or whatever, you're not on a full equal playing field. Sometimes, like, I kill the Ball, and then sometimes he kills me, and there's no consistency to it. Um, it's a bit strange. And also, it really is dependent on, like, what setup they've got. So, obviously, if he's got the... Um, if he's got his power where he takes reduction depending on his health and that type of stuff then it, it does make a difference so yeah um that's why i just say it's a bit more maybe of a skill matchup or <laughs> you could argue say a bit more luck and the same can be said for like crow as well right so like if crow keeps peeping you at bay um then he's going to whittle you down and kill you whereas obviously if you can hit him a few times with clay pigeons um then you know you might win that matchup um and then obviously some of the others as well so it's more just about you know if you can dodge their attacks and then get a bit closer or you can whittle them down then you have a good chance of beating them but if they obviously get the upper hand on you they've got more chance of beating you so i just i just i don't think that these brawlers are better than shelly and shelly is better than them it's very much about how you and that other person are interacting with each other and who basically comes out on top rather than it being a bit more favorable um win most of the time then so we've got um where these brawlers i just think most of the time you just beat them like there is you know i think you could argue that there are going to be some certain instances where they you might actually lose um, and it could be more of a skill matchup so you know i absolutely get that but for the most part when you come up against these brawlers you usually win um in my opinion and then just the win hands down is you literally could just apart from maybe sandy and again i think there's you know the more i look at this the more i think i could i could move some of these ballers around up and down and, and as i get higher through the trophies uh, i may review this so you know for example at the moment i'm seeing lots and lots of cordelius i'm seeing lots of kit i'm seeing lots of um you know edgars obviously um and so they just make huge difference because obviously i'm seeing those brawlers more so i have more of a an idea and again you know map obviously pays an account into what type of brawlers you see more often than not um but yeah rosa and frank i just think outright you just beat them um you, you know you could just not hit frank with your super until he's about to use his and he just dies and rosa again um you just you can just blast through our shield um quite comfortably so she just loses and then sandy yeah again quite weak obviously if you trying to chase him and he's hitting you with a few attacks and you, you he's going to whittle you down a little bit but for the most part you can usually just steam ahead and kill kill sandy no problem at all. that is my kind of tier list slash view of shelly against these ballers specifically it's massively controversial i know um it's more of just a 
ballpark of like my experiences and ones to be aware of so you know take it with a pinch of salt and let's use this as an opportunity to have a discussion in the comments i do look at the comments i do reply so do feel free to post your opinion on that and i'll be more than happy to, to discuss that for sure um so how difficult was it to reach 800 trophies um sort of accompanied by a tier list so again we've got another tier list that this is going to be specifically for each baller um and where we've got to with those so the categories that we have got is um easy peasy so was it was it easy to 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 win with them and get to this milestone had to try map reliant struggle painful so i would say with shelly um for the most part it's pretty easy peasy like it wasn't ridiculously um difficult there were some nuances that i had to figure out like in terms of who i would win against one on one um and in certain scenarios which was kind of discussed a moment ago on the tier list for the different brawlers that you face but you know she's not that tough um you know as i said first she's strong as well in the meta i think if i had um a supercharge then it would just be way 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 easier um so for that reason i'm gonna put her in the easy piece for now it could change once we hit thousand trophy milestones but for now she is in the easy peasy category um and then final thoughts then so what are my final thoughts so yeah um interesting one so final thoughts are yeah like there's no denying that teaming is real um and it is quite a struggle you do need to eliminate obviously at least five people or five people need to be eliminated for you to kind of draw even slash slowly creep up um, and in most matches that I'm seeing part post 750 trophies, there is usually always five people, four people left. Very, very Unless somebody is going around the map and obliterating everybody, or you get a few cubes, it very much does come down to the crunch. And obviously, if you are unlucky or you don't get familiar with the matchups, which is something that I'm still learning, if you go out, you know, for the first three people to go out, or one of the first three people to go out, four people. You know you really do feel the trophy hit um and it can set you back quite a bit which can be quite frustrating so i suppose do we think we're going to get to a thousand trophies hell yeah um i'm gonna have to wait for what the next map is as i said it's I'm very much enjoying it i i think shelly is the first one i really want to get to a thousand trophies i do see myself having a bit of a struggle not having the um i'm calling it the super chart i actually think it's called hyper chart whatever that is I think I actually said it earlier. That is obviously going to be, I think, a big factor in how well I do. So it might be that, you know, we, we get really, really close to a thousand, but we super struggle without that. But we'll have to see. Um, yeah, look, guys, this was like my first video on this. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I've, I've really enjoyed, obviously, you know, playing Brawl Stars again, coming back to it after having a year break. It's been really, really fun. So, uh, as you can see from my YouTube channel, I do post content typically uh, on PC. But I've obviously taken a big focus in more mobile gaming, being a dad, having two kids, trying to find the time. Uh, you know, just getting down and doing stuff on the PC has just been quite a challenge. So, um, you know, Brawl Stars is just such an easy pick up and play game. I've got quite a lot of friends and colleagues that are starting to play it. If you do want to join my clan, um, then you're more than welcome to a club, um, as they call it in Brawl Stars. There'll be a link to that in the description. I also have a Discord as well. So if you want to talk to me in there, you're more than welcome to join Discord too. Um, and other than that, guys, that's pretty much it. I think that wraps up this video, this first uh, install of Brawl Stars um, and my trophy. So I think I'm going to do like a really big series. I, you know, I love showdown um both solo and duo um this series is obviously going to be predominantly focused on solo we might throw some duo in there if i can find a good duo partner so for any of you who's looking for a good duo partner on 25 28,000 cups roughly then let me know um and we can get some content out there for duo in but yeah solo in is my focus for now um and that's where we're going to take it so look that's it. That's that wraps up the video. Thanks guys for watching and um yeah, we'll see you in the uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot. Peace.